Hi, my name is Justin Sears. I'm Product Marketing Manager at Hortonworks. We're here for a brief product tour of Apache Hadoop 2. In this video, you'll learn why Yarn is now the operating system of Hadoop. I'm joined here today by two people, Arun Murthy, one of the original architects on Hadoop. Welcome, Arun. Thank you. Glad to be here. Arun um, was on the team that started working on, on Hadoop in the beginning, so he's been working on Hadoop for about eight years. He's also one of the co-founders of Hortonworks. And more recently, uh, uh, Arun wrote the, the Apache Software Foundation JIRA ticket, MapReduce 279, that contained the core idea for YARN, which is part of the recent release of Hadoop 2. I'm also joined by Rohit Bakshi, who's a product manager at Hortonworks. Rohit is responsible for YARN, HDFS, high availability, disaster recovery, and he also manages our relationship with Microsoft. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks. Why is Yarn now the operating system for Hadoop? Yarn really recasts Hadoop in a much more gentle fashion. One of the one of my you know favorite analogies with Yarn is if you go back to Hadoop one, Hadoop had um, I would loosely say an operating system to run applications, but there's only one application, mm -hmm. so it was sort of equivalent to having Microsoft Windows with only Notepad and kind of worse yet, it, it was like having the, the operating system and the application fused together mm -hmm. into one big ball. So with Yarn, we've all obviously separated that. What it means now is that we can run different applications like Notepad or uh, PowerPoint or Word or whatever it is on the same base layer that's you know Yarn, which is sort of analogous to Windows. Having said that, it, it is important to uh, point out also at the same time that Yarn is not limited to Linux. We can actually run Yarn both on Linux and on Windows, and that's been the fruits of the collaboration we've done with you know our you know our, our partners from Microsoft. And you know you touched on something that's very important in terms of the open source community. So, and you've been involved with this for a while. How has the community rallied around this idea of Yarn, and how you know how many organizations have been involved, or individuals from the different organizations involved to develop this? I mean, it's it's been you know. It's it's been, you know, huge uptake not just in the Hadoop community but also the other open source communities. Whether it's Apache Storm, you know, some folks from Yahoo have had Apache Storm running on uh, Yarn in production for a while now. Um, similarly, there is Giraffe. Similarly, there is uh, Hama. There is a lot of people realizing. Uh, well, some of it, obviously, some of this is already happening in the developer community, but it's you know sort of happening in the in the broader space now. Is that if you want to come up with an, a cool way of processing data, if you go back a couple of years, you had to go invent not just a framework but also a system to manage it, right? right. You had to worry about you had to worry about multi-tenancy, you had to worry about resource controls, you had to worry about isolation. People are beginning to understand that the those hard parts are already being taken care of by Yarn. So you, as the developer, can now focus just on the algorithm that. Mm -hmm or the problem that you want to solve. Mm -hmm. And let Yarn take care of resource management and SLAs across different kinds of workloads mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and preemption and so on and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So it's the, not just, the exciting part for me is not only has the open source community realized this, but the overall you know, broader software render community is beginning to realize this. The appeal of this is that if you look, back, if you look forward um, you know, 12 months from now, let's say uh, 12, 18 months from now, Everybody who's using Hadoop will be will have Yarn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're now a, a software vendor and you're you know you've got a cool idea and you want to monetize that, mm -hmm. instead of having to you know do soup to nuts of trying to build the whole stack, mm -hmm. you can focus on just the problem at hand, mm -hmm. um, b and because you can assume that Yarn already exists. Rohit, have you seen so talk, talking about that those application now that now that many applications can run mm -hmm. on Yarn and Hadoop too, mm -hmm. are you seeing applications spun up just based on that opportunity? Do we know about people that are writing applications now to run in Yarn already? Absolutely. So there, um, people are writing new applications to run on Yarn, and then from an enterprise perspective, enterprise are becoming comfortable bringing in new applications into their op into their cluster. So if I think of an enterprise who wants to do real-time stream processing and also wants to do ad hoc analytics on top of that and update their models in real time, they can have a cluster, a multi-tenant multi cluster. I think SLAs and multi-tenancies are really important to drill in, in on here. I have one cluster where I have Storm running 
And as an enterprise, I want Storm running, I want MapReduce jobs to be running, and I want HBase to be running to serve up those applications at the end. I can now enforce, at an organization level, SLAs through the scheduler in Yarn, through the capacity scheduler in Yarn, across all those applications. Mm -hmm. So I can enforce that Storm's going to take, let's say, 30% of my cluster will be dedicated to streaming ingest. And the other, ha the other rest of the cluster will be split up between batch jobs that need to update the models you know, in four to five hours every day, and then HBase that will de you know, deliver the model outputs to my business application. And so as an enterprise, I'm comfortable bringing in these new types and forms of serving up and processing mm -hmm. data. And as new so software vendors bring in, create applications, bring that into the cluster, and use a common, you know, from an operating systems perspective, common resource model, common, common scheduling, common quotas, and storage management through HDFS that allows an enterprise to use all those different types of applications mm -hmm. in one cluster and manage it from one place. Oh. That's interesting. So, so if if there's a large enterprise that has maybe um, data and compute islands that don't talk to each other, mm -hmm. is this an opportunity to kind of encourage some consolidation and efficiencies of scale on top of Yarn and Hadoop? Absolutely, okay. and, and a lot of the reasons why people have those islands is because they're very concerned that a group needs this amount of processing and this amount of data storage dedicated to it. They're concerned that if that island were to go away, they wouldn't be able to meet their SLAs. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't meet to meet their every 30 minutes this job needs to run. And that's the work that we've done in Yarn is to ensure that through checks and balances, through the capacity schedule, you can actually use that to define how much processing of the entire cluster that's available to you gets us allocated to organizations and to applications. And, and then just to, to, add, to add on uh, to Rohit's point, uh, one of the key things that you, if, if you operate at this at scale, whether it's you know whether it's 100 nodes, whether 200 mm -hmm. nodes or thousands of nodes, it's the concept of elasticity is really important. Mm -hmm. he, you know, Rohit gave this example where you want 30 percent of your capacity dedicated to your event processing infrastructure maybe 40% to your batch and you know another 30% to your interactivity. Having said that, there are always going to be periods where you will not be using you know, all the capacity mm -hmm. you dedicated. Mm -hmm. So you definitely don't want to silo your capacity. Mm -hmm. So what Yarn is really good at is saying, look, you asked for 30%, but at this point in time, you're only using 10%. So what I'm going to do is now redistribute in an elastic fashion the extra capacity that you have so that we can actually get more work done and get more throughput and more utilization over the you know, infrastructure that you have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. On the same point, if suddenly you went from go ha needing 10 to 30, 40%, Yarn is really good at this point at making sure that you meet the SLAs if by necessary pulling the other guys down who are operating beyond their capacity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So we get this notion of elasticity built in, which is really key if you want to operate something like Hadoop at scale. Mm -hmm. So if you compare that to an enterprise that has multiple data islands, they might have specced that that system exactly. for a certain size, but probably most of those islands are underutilized at any given Absolutely. point in time, right? So you have all this excess capacity. Absolutely. So Yarn helps, not only is it big, big data at scale, but it helps with some of the organizational efficiency. Yeah, and, and every single org enterprise you'll talk to will tell you that they'll always plan for the peak, right? Because the peak is what you have to do your capacity planning for. The problem with doing that is the difference between your peak and your average is pretty significant in a lot of cases. And w what it means is that there's a significant amount of underutilization that's happening in your overall uh, data center, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main reasons why something like the capacity schedule is such a big deal, because you can dynamically reallocate that underutilization to to parts. You know, maybe you have an ad hoc, you know, you know, research, you know, um, use case, where now the researchers can actually take over the excess capacity, ha but at the same point, your production use cases can be sure that when there's actual need, nobody. The, the researchers will be put back in their box mm -hmm. if, if necessary, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you get the doubling in, in efficiency that Arun was talking about is exactly through that kind of mechanism. Yeah. So it all kind of ties back together. And then on the outer end, as more and more groups within an enterprise begin using Hadoop and use, you know, accessing Yarn-based mm -hmm. applications, mm -hmm. you don't have an outer limit because the thing scales linearly, right? Yes. So you can continue yes. to grow the same part of elasticity, you can you can dial it down mm -hmm. in some ways, but you can also keep growing it out as more and more users come online. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's one of the key 
sort of tenets for Hadoop itself, um, even when I started um, in 2006, eight years ago, um, it, one of our goals was to be able to you know, run 10 to 15,000 node Hadoop clusters because we want to store that much data. Um, having said that, you know, modern hardware is significantly different compared to what we were buying in 2006. But yet, you know, you'll see people, as people take on more and more, see more and more value from Hadoop, they'll, they'll push more and more workloads on top of Hadoop, which means we as a platform have to continue to be able to scale. Um, and obviously Yarn, with, with the refactoring we've done with Yarn and MapReduce, the central system, which is Yarn, is really, is, is much easier to scale than to scale a monolithic system mm -hmm. like MapReduce 1 or Hadoop 1. Arun and Rohit, thank you so much for spending the time talking about uh, Yarn and HDFS and, uh, and Hadoop 2. Very exciting, um, and I can tell you guys are excited about it. And I want to thank you for joining us. You can follow all of the upcoming improvements that we mentioned today by going to our website, hortonworks.com. We have pages on Yarn, HDFS, and we also have um, our blog there, and we will be updating you about improvements, Yarn, HFS, and Core Hadoop throughout on our blog. And then finally, follow us on Twitter. That's where you can get minute-by-minute uh, -minute alerts on anything that posts to our blog, and so you'll know about any changes that we're making to Hadoop or Hortonworks as soon as we make them. Thank you for joining us.